let's queer up business. Microsoft cuts entire diversity, equity, and inclusion team. What does it mean to LGBTQ people? A leaked email reveals Microsoft's decision to get rid of an entire DEI team sent to thousands of employees. The email cited changing business needs as the reason behind the layoff. The exact number of affected employees remains unclear. The unidentified team leader wrote, true systems change work associated with DEI programs everywhere are no longer business critical or smart as they were in 2020. Despite this internal communication, Microsoft spokesperson Jeff Jones emphasized that the company's DEI commitments remain unchanged. He stated, our focus on diversity and inclusion is unwavering and we are holding firm on our expectations, prioritizing accountability and continuing to focus on this work. Following the murder of George Floyd in 2020 and the subsequent Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement, many businesses, including Microsoft, pledged to enhance DEI efforts. Microsoft specifically committed to doubling the number of black leaders by 2025. However, the recent email aligns with a broader trend of tech giants scaling back DEI initiatives. Other major companies have also reduced their DEI programs. Zoom laid off a DEI team earlier this year, and Google and Meta reduced their DEI efforts in 2023. Additionally, John Deere abandoned its LGBTQ plus inclusion strategy following backlash from right-wing pundits, and Tractor Supply faced criticism over its DEI initiatives. This industry-wide shift raises concerns about the future of workplace inclusivity and representation for marginalized groups. LGBTQ plus activists criticized the Microsoft move and suggested it is part of a response to ultra-conservative, anti-woke campaigns by the GOP, evangelicals, and Fox News. Well, you know, uh, people always wonder, like, Alex, you're always so critical of queer groups t uh, interacting with businesses and taking their money. It's like, it's not so much taking their money. It's, I know that they're always just going to drop us. Uh, th they'll drop us faster than a potential grinder hookup, quite frankly. The moment <laughs> it suits them to just say, we, we don't want that, would no longer suit their interests, uh, really can be seen. And this is also, you know, a reminder of two, uh, of another big thing, which is like, you know, people want, they talk about diversity, equity, inclusion in the workplace. But they never actually talk about taking, uh, making sure that employees are treated in a way where, where, where you're not using a lot of power over them. Because if you can abuse your worker, you're going to create discriminatory situations. But I also remind people, if you really want diversity and equity and inclusion in your, your, your place of work, my, including Microsoft, we have a different word for it. It's called the union. The only group that's actually going to protect you if you're a marginalized person, if you want pay equity, which notice that person did not mention equity in his yeah. speech. And actually the Human Resources Association took e the E out of DEI earlier this month. You know, you want pay equity, you want fairness, you want proper inclusive treatment. You need to have a union where they can actually have a representative to defend you. So that's my union plug. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, yeah, go ahead. I was yeah. going to say, um, Microsoft reached out to me in 2020 in yeah. order to become the, the group facilitator for the Michael Brown uh, Foundation because they had the Chosen Fathers for Change. They came down for a retreat. It was an amazing experience. But those monies that they are now cutting as far as through the program for their own respective organization, um, uh, they are now going to probably reach over into maybe some of that other work that they've been doing with some of the other black led organizations, as well as some of the other LGBTQ plus organizations. It's just, they, it doesn't just stop right there within the, within the company. And I, I would imagine that spillover is going to look, is going to spill right over into the community in a, in a larger way. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. You That's know. what I was getting ready for. Yeah. <laughs> because so many times in working in big organizations, you know, we have one message that goes out and behind the scenes is something totally different. Hello. And, you know, having worked for a company for oh. 34 years, 24 years. God, I'm dating myself. Yeah. Um, I remember what it was like, you know, back in the 90s and the 2000s and things of that nature. You know, I'm very happy where I landed now, but it's still a heavy lift. So, yes, and yeah. I totally agree with you. I, I can speak from experience, you know, being hired at a company the, during the interview. Oh, we're equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. We accept all people. I get hired and then they treat me like hell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make me going to work like 
just even tolerating the work environment so extremely hard sitting at my desk not being able to use the bathroom at, at this company mm -hmm. and sitting at a desk for eight hours holding my urine because ev all of my other co-workers can go but if I use the ladies room I'm offending the women there mm -hmm. you know stuff like that and that's just one thing that I that I dealt with and the and literally they told me oh no it's because I was the one when I went for the interview I said I hope that you know me being trans won't be a problem I took the test I passed the test um, and, you know, I was hired and it ended up being a fiasco. I mean, it was really tough. I bit the bullet and I was determined to, like, prove myself. And I stayed there for seven years. But it was hard. It was really hard. If I could just jump in to say, I knew that that's where you were going to end up, your determination. I think that is something about our generation that we were willing to stick it out, mm. yeah. you know, which is something that this generation you know, really needs to pick up. Wow. Or is it a thing that they need to pick it up or that employers aren't even giving them the chance? Because one of the things, the, the sort of issue is the our government doesn't really enforce workers' rights anymore. No. You know, like you go to any other country uh, these days, there's far more concepts of workers' rights, there's far more options you have here. You know, if someone like in your situation, yes, you can talk to one of the many legal uh, representative groups here. It'll take years to get anything done, and they'll probably say, oh, here's a couple of bucks for your time, and you've been out of work for three or four years waiting for an answer. And then how much does that even invalidate your voice even in that workspace? Mm -hmm. Are you going to exactly. tell mama? Mm -hmm. You can I'm, go tell mama. I'm going to um, also state that, again, without knowing the facts and us working for Microsoft and, again, also working for a big company, is that you know when the Supreme Court you know, took on affirmative action and overturned a lot of those. Um, it led companies to have to, to take a deeper dive on how they're presenting their policies. So the word DEI or departments that have, you know, D under the terminology. So, you know, yes, I mean, I think we have to look at DEI initiatives, whether it's that it comes under HR. HR is typically the first to get cut in any kind of budget cut. So mm -hmm. across the board, tech companies have been cutting back staff, not just in DEI, but across the board. So there have been cuts across the board. Um, you know, Microsoft just last year got up 100% on the HRC corporate equality index, um, which means they have policies in place that, of course, are, you know, affirming not just to LGBTQ people, but to diverse people. So, um, you know, I think we, you know, have to take it with a grain of salt of, you know, they're maybe laying off DEI people, but they're also laying off people in other areas. But also, I think the initiatives within many companies, they have to rebrand them um, under in a way that is both um, uh, sensitive to the legal world that we live in today um, with with what's happened with the Supreme Court, but also to shareholders, because, you know, many of these companies, again, if you have a, a, a line item in your in your annual report that you spent, you know, two million dollars on DEI initiatives, that may need to just be, as you said, displaced into other into other initiatives. And I think we're seeing that, you know, again, being the you know ch chair for the task force gala, um, getting sponsorship, you know, is a is also part of usually some of the DEI efforts of big companies. So um, in, and in many cases, even sponsorships are being, um, not that the dollars aren't there, but they're having to reposition them in different yes. ways of how, of why they're doing it. So it can't just be, oh, we want to support LGBTQ people. It needs to be, we want to support, you know, uh, I, I will use my example as a, as a bank, but this is not speaking on behalf of Truist, but we want to support, you know, fair housing and, and lending practices in the LGBTQ community. That's different than just saying we want to support LGBTQ people. Still both positive initiatives, but it's the way they have to rebrand it. Well, that sort of also. gets into the, yeah. But that also gets into the issue of like the human rights campaign has been under a lot of scrutiny for how they give a 100%. They give it yeah. Amazon a 100% multiple times. I don't, I know if you meet any queer workers, there's some that are activists here in Broward County who will tell you about the brutal conditions they face. And I don't view that as a 100% scorecard. So like you should always yeah. be careful about when a group gives those sorts of ratings. Like, I'll well, you have to know what the rating's for. Is it for working conditions or is it for policies that are uh, affirming, you know, whether they provide, you know, benefits for same-sex mm -hmm. partners, whether you're married or not. I mean, there's a lot of other How things on different? that list. I, well, I'm not, I'm not saying that but they're it, not valid. I'm saying... Oh, no, I'm not, but I mean, honestly, when you think of it, when you really think about, it, like, 
if you're not going to treat your workers Absolutely. well, how are you going to be good to them as queer people or as black yeah. people or as yeah. women? You know, and that's sort of, I like, think, the point of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Broad sweep. And don't get me started on the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, Trump really screwed us with that. I'm going to just say it. It's ridiculous. All the, To take away um, affirmative action? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? And then you have, as a company, you cut the entire department. Like you don't keep like one or two employees. See, sometimes I think people do things and they camouflage it mm -hmm. as a certain thing when it's really something else. Yeah. True. You know what I mean? Anyway, don't get me. Uh, Y'all are getting me riled up. <laughs> I'll do it. a table dance in a minute now. <laughs>